Hey everyone, welcome to Admitted Parent Presentation. We are so excited to have you here. And of course, congratulations on your students' admittance to App State. My name is Liz Alice, and I'll be giving you this virtual tour. If you have any questions throughout, throughout your time, please make sure to ask. We are always here to help. So just as a quick introduction to where we are located, we are in Boone, North Carolina, which is in the northwestern corner of uh, North Carolina. Um, we are a top three public regional university in the South. Um, we're also well known for our safety as well as outdoor adventure. Um, we were recently rated uh, number 13 in the nation for outdoor adventures. So lots of amazing things to do in this community. Um, we are located in a small town of about 20,000 people and we have about 20,000 students on campus. So we literally double the population of this town. So a lot of our efforts on campus are to give back to our community and try to make this place a better place than when we left it. To give you guys an idea of where we are located in North Carolina again, um, you can see the A, which represents where we are. Um, we are roughly two hours from Greensboro, Charlotte, Asheville, those kind of major cities. Um, we're also about five hours from Wilmington, Charleston, and Nashville. So that's a really awesome opportunity if your student is looking to do like a longer break or a longer weekend. Um, but we do have transportation available as well from Charlotte to Boone, as well as Greensboro to Boone um, and back. Um, it's a very affordable price. So if you are an out of state student or if you are looking um, to have your student travel, there are regional airports in those areas, definitely affordable and safe to get to. Transportation on campus is available. Um, so we have something called the Apple Cart. This is a free public transportation system that runs all throughout App State's campus as well as the entire town of Boone. So your student can just hop onto this Apple Cart, swipe their card, and then they can go to the grocery store. They can go if they have an off-campus job, they can go to their job, movie theater, all sorts of different places off campus, as well as get to and from class. So that's wonderful. We also have the option for freshmen if they, are, if they want to bring their car to campus, that is totally fine. We have a parking lot specific for first year students. It's about a mile off campus and we have a shuttle service that'll bring them to and from that parking lot. So again, definitely recommend relying a little more on that public transportation since it's free. Housing is definitely one of the big questions that we get from parents. So I encourage you to reach out if you have any questions related to that. Ultimately, freshmen are required to live on campus for their first year. They will be offered two main, dis, uh, main options for style of housing. The first one is traditional or community style, which is your child and a roommate, and they're sharing a bathroom with their hall or their floor. Uh, suite style is another option where it is two people in one room, two people in another room, and they're sharing a bathroom. The biggest difference I want to mention is in suite style, your child will have to clean their own bathroom as well as provide their own toilet paper, stuff like that. Um, whereas traditional or community style, somebody is cleaning that bathroom for them and providing everything. So lots of different options. There are definitely more students in traditional housing, so that is more than likely the, the route that they're going to go. Um, transfer students may also live on campus if space is available. About 75 to 80% live off campus though. And again, that comes back to that uh, public transportation line. If a student does live off campus as a transfer or once your student is a little older, that is totally fine. They can just hop on the apple cart and be right at campus. So there's a couple programs that I would definitely like to give you options for. Um, your student potentially had the option to apply for these during the early action deadline when they applied. Um, if they didn't, Watauga Residential College is still open as of right now, um, and it is April. So just kind of keep an eye out for that. It'll be in your Mind Mountaineer portal. Um, but selective academic programs include the Honors College, Watauga Residential College, and ACES for education majors. So these three are a little bit more accelerated academically. They offer a lot more resources on campus. Um, they do kind of some engagement together and they also live together. Um, so this is definitely an interesting experience if students are looking for that large campus feel and experience, but still that smaller sense of community. These are great options. Um, Honors College, I also recommend for students who are looking to pursue free professional degrees, um, or a master's degree. That is definitely a huge support within the honors program. Um, and Watauga has definitely a different kind of learning style. Uh, they do classes outside. There's a lot of different 
opportunities within Watauga. And it's, it's a really interesting place to live. Um, it's a really special community. So highly recommend checking those out. Um, scholarship opportunities were available through the early action deadline as well, but there are also departmental scholarships that your child will have the option to uh, look at throughout their semesters and their years at App State. There are also tons of outside scholarships. Um, we have a database on our website for outside scholarships, which I highly recommend checking out. Um, you can also Google scholarships. Um, Fast Web is a good one. Lots of different opportunities, but there's literally millions of dollars out there in scholarship opportunity that I highly recommend checking out. So at App State, we have over 150 majors on campus. So there's always something to choose from. The big thing I do wanna mention is that the most popular major for students coming in um, is undecided. So if your student is stressing what to declare that major as, definitely not as big of a deal as they probably assumed, um, but they do not have to declare their major until typically about 30 to 60 credit hours in after their general education studies. And in most cases, a minor cannot be declared before 30 credit hours either. Um, that is a very common question. Students will wanna add a minor or a double major. That is all something that can be done later on after the attainment of multiple credit hours, and they can talk to their academic advisor about that. Um, a student can declare or change their major in their My Mountaineer portal. There's a link at the bottom that says request an update. They're welcome to click on that and they can change their major, they can declare their major um, amongst other things. So huge opportunities for your students. Because we are an undergraduate focused university, undergraduate research is a huge opportunity that many students at other universities do not have. So I definitely wanna take a second to mention that. 98% um, of the faculty at App State are in the highest degree in their field, which means they are working towards research to accelerate their field and progress their field further. What's really amazing is they let undergraduate students as early as freshman year get on board with these research projects. So not only is your student kind of learning more about their field, but they're figuring, figuring out exactly where they fit into that, which is an amazing experience. Um, the other amazing experience at App State is study abroad. So about a quarter of our students do some sort of study abroad. There are tons of different opportunities from roughly like one week trips um, which are more of like service experiences, all the way up to a year long trip, um, which are part of our exchange program. So there are scholarships, there's financial aid available with a lot of those exchange programs, you're just paying app state tuition. And then if you want some extra spending money because you're in a different country, that kind of thing. Um, but definitely do not discredit study abroad um, as something that you can't afford. I know I did um, and truly there's a lot of different opportunity for study abroad. So definitely check that out as well. 98% of our undergraduates are employed or enrolled in higher education within a year of graduation, which is a huge, huge point of pride for us, um, as well as a large proportion of our students do some form of internship. Um, as I mentioned before, community is definitely a big part of App State, and we value the experience that students get from working with the community as well as kind of learning about their field at the same time. So more than likely, your student will partic participate in either a mandatory internship or they can set up their own internship if they choose to. So your student has a ton of different resources on campus. The big thing I wanna emphasize with resources is that when in doubt, have your student look on campus before they look off campus for something. Academically, we have everything that a student could possibly need all the way from tutoring and learning labs, um, workshops, as well as through disability services, you can report an accommodation, all that kind of stuff. Everything all the way to health services. So we have counseling services built into. We also have um, an on-campus pharmacy, allergy clinic, all of those different resources. Um, in terms of uh, intercultural student affairs, we have three centers on campus. That's the Women's Center, the LGBT Center, and the Multicultural Center. These three centers are responsible for not only just events and programming on campus, but they also offer a physical safe space on campus. That your student can go and hang out or volunteer, learn more, expand their mind, lots of awesome opportunities. So again, if your student is looking for something on campus, definitely have them check on campus before they check off campus.
So when we're looking at tuition, we're looking at roughly 15,000 uh, for North Carolina residents and roughly 30,000 for out-of-state students. The big thing that I wanna emphasize here is this estimate includes full-time tuition, all of the fees, the standard room and meal plan, and most of the textbooks. So this is a comprehensive cost. Um, you're not looking at any more, not looking at any less necessarily. Um, and then on top of that, we can also benefit from scholarships and other opportunities. Um, the textbook rental program, I do wanna mention really quick, that is an amazing program that'll save you thousands of dollars throughout your students' time at App State. Um, major textbooks or each major textbook for each class they're taking is included in their tuition. Um, so instead of having to buy or rent those books, they're just renting them through their tuition. No big deal. So definitely an amazing opportunity. So 70% of our students do receive some form of financial aid, whether that's scholarships, grants, loans, student employment, lots of different opportunities. The big thing I wanna make sure of is that if your student has not done the FAFSA already, make sure that they do that as soon as possible. The priority date was technically March 1st. Um, and then they will likely have to update that every year just to make sure that their funding is correct. Um, but they will receive federal funding through this. And essentially what happens is the FAFSA will send information to App State and we will produce a financial aid package. So the most important dates for you to remember in this whole process are May 1st, which is the decision deadline. So for admitted students, we're gonna need a decision no later than May 1st. Um, once your student has confirmed or denied, um, in this case confirmed, they would have access to the housing application, class registration and orientation. So there's no benefit necessarily to confirming early for housing sake, because that is a random selection. However, for things like orientation and class registration, um, it does benefit students to be confirmed before May or before other students, essentially. So you may be familiar with the My Mountaineer portal at this point. This is your student's admissions portal. This has all of their admissions counselor information. They get updates to this portal, um, all of their user information, as well as their admissions decision, enrollment checklist, financial aid information, and if they've reported any scores. All of that is housed within here. So this is what your student will use throughout their time at App State while they're doing the application process. Once they have completed everything and they've started classes, they will transition to AppleNet. So once a student has confirmed, they'll have access to AppleNet. Um, they'll go in and they will establish their App State credentials, which will allow them to log into here, as well as other systems. Um, but within AppleNet, they have class registration. They can pull their grades, records, transcripts, all that stuff. They can make payments. Um, there is additional scholarship opportunity once they are attending. Um, their health insurance information, waivers and all of that are in here. They can order a parking pass as well as a ton of other different resources are available through AppleNet as well. So this is what they'll be using throughout their time at Appalachian State as a student. What is definitely convenient for y'all is within AppleNet under the personal information tab, there is also a, um, a button that'll let you do a parent or third party access option. This will allow you to have your own separate login to AppleNet so you can have access to things like academic records, the student account, financial aid, housing, conduct stuff, all of that. Um, you can opt in and out of certain things on this list. So if your student and you decide that you don't need access to athletics, that's totally fine, you can opt out of that. But this is definitely something that is beneficial for your student who is over 18. So you can have all that additional information, especially financial, and they don't have to essentially tell you everything. <laughs> Although it is best for you. So if your student attended a community college or a college while attending apps, uh, while attending high school, if they're dual enrolled in some other program, if they take an IB, AP or CLEP tests or classes, they will get a credit evaluation. So first year students um, with transfer credits will typically receive their credit evaluation between two and three weeks um, once their advanced payment is received, so their confirmation. For transfer and early college students, their official credit evaluations will be completed within, within two or three weeks of being admitted. So if your student has been admitted and is an early college or transfer student and you haven't received that evaluation, definitely let us know so we can get you that information. 
Um, and then for our first year students, just make sure that student is confirmed. And then the next two or three weeks, they should receive that information. There are tons of additional resources on campus for this whole process. So if you have questions about anything, um, you are more than welcome to reach out to admissions. Your student has an assigned admissions counselor that you're more than welcome to reach out to. We also have a bunch of different resources on our visit page, including one-on-ones, um, a Zoom drop-in every day, Monday through Friday from eight to five, which is a really nice opportunity to just talk to an admissions counselor and ask a question. They'll also have access to an academic advisor um, for class registration and ERA. This is typically not available until roughly after orientation, so keep that in mind. Um, housing is a great resource as well as financial aid. Um, orientation is going to be there. Your students will all attend an orientation over the summer. This is where they'll get a lot of additional information about what is available to them on campus, as well as those resources that they'll need um, to complete class registration and all of that. Um, there's also medical services. They'll end up needing to turn in immunization records and do their insurance. Um, so you're more than welcome to reach out to them as well if you have any questions. And this is our link to our visit page. Like I mentioned, there's a lot of amazing events available for App State students. So please definitely check us out. Um, if you have any questions, again, please feel free to reach out anytime. We're always happy to help. Thank you and have a wonderful day.